In this lesson, we're going to look at <coughs> graphing trig functions. Um, so before we start that, let's just talk about what a periodic function is. So a periodic function is something that repeats. So you can see in this graph here, we have a periodic function. We don't really need to know the equation, but we can see that it repeats. Um, so one cycle. We could start anywhere to find the period, the cycle that it takes to repeat. So if I start here, it goes to the top, and then it goes back to the bottom, and then it repeats. Goes to the top, back to the bottom, then it repeats. And then you can see the arrows on the end are showing that it's repeating forever. So the period would be the amount of time or units it would take to repeat. So if I look at the red, it started at 0 on the x and ended at 4. So I would say the period is 4 units. And then again, the blue, if the blue starts at 4, ends at 8, so it repeats in 4. So I can say that the cycle or the period repeats every 4 units. I can look at the maximum value of the uh, function is 4. Here's the top. I can find a minimum function. The bottom is here at negative 2. Um, I could find the middle. So we can find the middle of the graph by taking the top plus the bottom and dividing by 2. So sometimes we want to find that middle axis. So we take the top and the bottom, divide by 2. So that means the middle, um, sorry, that's 1. I can't do my math here. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So here's the middle. And then we can talk about what the amplitude is. The amplitude is the measure from the middle to the top or the middle to the bottom. So this would be my amplitude, either here or here. So I can see it goes from 1 to 4, or 1 to negative 2, so it's 3. I could also find that by taking the maximum minus the minimum and dividing by 2. So let's do that calculation here. So the maximum was 4. Oops. The maximum was 4, the minimum was negative 2. So 4 minus 4 minus negative 2 is plus, is 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, so let's move on to um, sine, cosine, and tangent curves and what they look like. Okay, so in order to graph y equals sine theta, we're going to need some values. So we're going to make a table of values. I'm going to graph from negative 360 degrees to positive 360 degrees. Uh, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Okay, so if I want to find sine of negative 360, I just type in the calculator sine negative 360 and I will get a value of 0. So just make sure you can do that on your calculator then I'll type in. So I'm going to go in increments of 30 degrees. You can see in my grid I've got 360 to the right and the positive side and negative 360 to the left. Um, perhaps we'll go... the grid is in 45s, um, so let's let's go... we can do 330, that's fine. So sine negative uh, 330 is equal to 0 0.5 sine of negative 300 is equal to 0 0.866 sine of negative 270 is 1 sine of negative 240 is 0 0.866 sine of negative 210 is 0 0.5 and sine of negative 180 is back to 0 so it goes something like this and then We've got a couple of values in between. 
So there's up to 180, and then we'll continue on. So 150 is negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.866, uh, negative 1, negative 0 0.866, negative 0 0.5, and then back to 0. Got some couple of values in here, and it looks like that. And then that continues on to 360. So it goes to 0 at 90, it's got a value of 1. And then it continues on to 360. Okay, and then we'll just put arrows because this is continuous. So this is a periodic curve. The period is the amount of degrees that it takes to repeat. So one cycle, let's start here. So where do I end back to zero here? One cycle, yes, it goes to zero here, but then it goes down. So one cycle, one complete cycle is 360 degrees. So think about sine. The reason it's 360 is because you're actually plotting your path as you go around a circle. Right, so I'm making an angle of 30 degrees and I'm measuring the, when I do sine 30, I am measuring the measure of the opposite and the hypotenuse at 30 degrees. And then I'm going at 60, then I'm going at 90, and so on. So I'm going around the circle once is 360. So that's why the period is 360. So when we can look at the, where's the middle? Well, the middle is the x-axis. Sometimes we call that the sinusoidal axis. Or y equals zero. So that is the middle. The amplitude is the distance from the middle to the top or the bottom. So the maximum you'll see is 1. The minimum you can see is negative 1. The amplitude is 1. Okay, so the amplitude is the distance to the top or the distance to the bottom from the middle. Uh, if we're talking about domain and range, domain we can use any number it is continuous going left and right and then the range has a restriction on it it's between a maximum of one and a minimum of negative one so that is a sine curve it is a standard curve now you can draw the sine curve by just selecting five critical points what are those critical points well, in the table, the critical points are where it starts, its maximum, goes back to zero, its minimum, goes back to zero. So wherever these points are, where it hits zero, one, or negative one, we call these critical points. So on the graph here, they're at zero, the maximum, back to zero, the minimum, back to zero, and likewise on this side. And so we'll often, especially when we do transformations, we talk about these critical points. These are the points that give the graph its shape. And these are the points that you want to use every single time. So zero, zero is where it starts. At 90 degrees, it goes to a maximum of one. At 180, it goes back to zero. At 270, it goes down to negative one and then 360 it goes back to zero. That is one cycle, and those are the critical points of that cycle.
So if we do cosine, we can just do those critical points in our table. Um, so at 0, it has a maximum of 1. At 90, it goes to 0. At 180, it goes down to negative 1. At 270, it goes back to 0. And at 360, it goes back to 1. So the cosine curve looks like this. Starts at the top, goes to 0, goes to the bottom, back to 0, back to the top. And now, obviously, there are points in between. You can fill them in if you want on your calculator. But these are the critical points for cosine. And so a cosine curve looks exactly like a sine curve. It just starts at a different spot. So it starts at 0, 1 rather than 0, 0. It has a period of 360 because, again, we're going around the circle. And once around the circle is 360. It has a maximum of 1, a minimum of negative 1, which gives it an amplitude of 1. So here's the amplitude from the middle to the bottom or the top. should be the same. It's symmetrical. Um, We have a sinusoidal axis, which is the middle. So again, that's the x-axis, or y equals 0. So this is my middle axis right here. And then domain and range is the same. We can use any number for x. It's continuous. The range is any number, but we would have a bottom of negative 1 and a top of 1. So cosine looks a lot like sine, but it just starts at a different spot. And then the critical points, we'll write these out because these are what we're going to use for transformations. So cosine starts at the top. At 90, it goes to the middle. At 180, it goes down to the bottom. 270, back to the middle and 360 back to the top. Now, tan looks a little bit different. And the reason tan looks different, because as I said, we're going around a circle. Right? We're plotting our path around a circle. So we're picking points as we go around the circle. We're finding the value of tangent at those points, and we're plotting them. But what happens at the top? and the bottom of the circle. So remember tan is opposite over adjacent or y over x. So when we get to the top, y has a value of 1, x has a value of 0. Well that's undefined. So what that does is creates a break in the graph which we call a vertical asymptote. So similar to the exponential functions where we have um, an asymptote which is the x-axis, uh, tan at 90 is going to create a vertical asymptote. There's a break in the graph because there is no answer at tan 90. If you t typed in tan 90 on your calculator, you would get error. And then that happens again at the bottom of the circle at 270 because uh, y is negative 1, x is 0, so that's also undefined. So at 270, we have an undefined. And then that goes, if we went in the negative direction, it would be at negative 90 and at negative 270. So at the top and the bottom of the circle there is undefined. So that's where you would start when graphing tan. Now, you won't have to do any transformations on tan. You'll just have to recognize what it looks like. So, uh, let's see, 0. So at 90, it's undefined. 270, it's undefined. Negative 90, it's undefined. And negative 270. In between, halfway in between, it's going to be 0. So at 0, it's 0. At 180, it's 0. At 360, it's 0. And the same on this direction. So it's 0 here, 0 here. So halfway between these asymptotes, it will be 0. 
And then what happens is, well, let's do this in blue. As we approach the vertical asymptote, it approaches up. To the left, it approaches down. To the right, it approaches up. So when you're drawing tan, you put in those vertical asymptotes at the top 90, at the bottom 270. In between, it's always zero, and then it will approach the vertical axes from the left and right. So the period of a tan curve is actually 180 because this vertical asymptote repeats every 180 degrees. Uh, the amplitude uh, is not applicable because it goes to infinity in the positive direction and infinity in the negative direction. The sinusoidal axis is still at zero, still the x-axis. The domain, oops, the domain is any real number, but not where there are asymptotes. So the domain is any real number except where it's undefined. So we say x does not equal 90, um, 270, negative 90, negative 270. Now that's within the interval between 0 and 360. Obviously it continues. Um, so you could, you might see it as x does not equal 90 plus 180k, meaning k repeats. So it's saying starting at 90 every 180 degrees there is an undefined vertical asymptote. Um, but if you're just doing it over this interval 0 to 360 you can just list the values. And then the range is any real number because it's continuous to, the, to infinity in the positive direction and infinity in the negative direction. So that's what a tan curve looks like. As I said, you won't have to transform it, but you will need to know what it looks like.